How are we doing folks? Welcome back to the Nightmare Cabin. We've got another album review to do. And this uh, requested really, um, oh no, not really requested, it's more recommendation from you lovely viewers. Uh, this is the solo album from Todd Latari and this is Rejoice in the Suffering. Uh, yeah, when I reviewed uh, the new Queensryche album, um, that was pretty popular, that one actually. Um, as far as views go for this uh, humble little channel. Um, not only did the man himself leave me a comment, um, but yeah, a couple of you recommended the solo album. I did mention that it, it slipped me by. And uh, more fool me, because this, my friends, is an absolute gem. And if you're an idiot like I am and slept on it, get on this now. Um, especially if you are, you know, a fan of the new era of Queensryche. And like I said, the um, we're four albums in now with Todd. And um, yeah, we are on a winning streak. Um before he was in Queens, right, as well, um, Todd also did a bit of work with uh, Crimson Glory. You might remember that little classic, Transcendence. Um, I did wonder if he'd done an album with them, but I just had a look on uh, Metal Archives, and yeah, he's done a single with them. And um, fingers crossed, you never know. Um, something might come up with that. And if he's, you know, if what he's done with Queens, right, if he could do it with that band, you know. So anyway, that's not important. Right now, we're talking about the solo album. Um... Not a million miles difference, really, from what he's doing with Queen's White, but different enough to be interesting and, and worth, you know, investing in and worth your investing your time in. And um, I would say, actually, this is worth just picking up regardless, no matter where you uh, sit on the fence in the big uh, paradigm of it all. But, um, yeah, so musically speaking, you've got... This is pretty much... Let me think. Think power metal, but in the American sense. Now, there's a long difference between power metal um, in America. So, say, Iced Earth, Sabotage, more modern bands like um, Eternal uh, Champion, you know. Um, and then you've got Europe. You've got bands like Halloween and um, all the like. I... For your power metal, which is basically just traditional metal with a modern kick up the arse, um, I do prefer the American side, must admit. But, um, yeah, so think... Oh, I just said American power metal, and I'm just about to say Judas Priest. Think like... Think painkiller Judas Priest. In fact, no, no. Forget all that. Think the first Halford album, uh, Resurrection. We're in that sort of realm. And um, think, oh, I'll tell you, right, Nevermore, there you go, think Nevermore, so think um, classic traditional metal with a good dose of melody, good riffs, good melody, good drums, you know, powerful songwriting, so think uh, maybe Dio, think Iron Maiden, think Priest, you know, traditional, good, good old fashioned, classic heavy metal. With the modern crunch of, you know, in the 90s. So we've got death metal. We've got Pantera. So we've got good modern use of groove. You know, thick, you know, thick down-tuned guitars. So say like what um, Testament did, really, with The Gathering. So they took what they were doing, the classic 80s formula, but they looked at what these bands over here were doing, your Cannibal Corpses and your Panteras of the world, and they went, why don't we adopt that to, the, to what we were doing back then and made a masterpiece with The Gathering. Um, and then that's what Bruce Dickinson did with The Chemical Wedding. Again, good, modern, underground, heavy crunch with the classical metal formula. So, yeah, think, think, and I think the band that really encapsulated that as a whole was Nevermore. So, yeah, think, and then, obviously, after Chemical Wedding, oh, bloody hell, who produced that? Uh, Roy, Roy Z, or Roy Z, um, went on to produce Resurrection by Halford. So, yeah, think Nevermore, think Testaments to the Gathering, think Bruce Dickinson, Chemical Wedding, think Halford, Resurrection. And you've probably got this. You've got, you've got a fresh, injected, and he kind of flirts with death metal 
here and there. Just flirts with it, just enough to give it a modern. Think of it like he just gets a bit of he gets a bit of death metal Tabasco sauce and just finishes it off. Just gives it a drizzle at the end, just to give you a little kick up the bollock. Um, but yeah, very very good. Really liking this. And um, but with all that being said, this is just you know 10, 10 plus three bonus tracks. Just, ten, just really good songs, you know, just really good solid written songs. Some great riffing, some great drums, great all you want. Great choruses, nice and hooky, and it all and the album is varied and diverse enough to keep you going. It just sails by. by. And um, I didn't realize I was only just looking at the back now that there's, there's actually three of these are bonus tracks. But so with 13. In total, you've got an hour. You've got an hour's worth of just a great hour of good heavy metal. And um, we start off with uh, Dogmata, which has a uh, it has a little crunch during the chorus. So it goes uh, dun, 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 during the chorus. Let's look up the lyrics actually. So it goes. Uh, I'm gonna do my best. Uh, Blood will rain. Da -da -da -da. Blood will rain far and wide. Blood will rain. Kill in the name of God. Blood will rain. And as he goes, blood will rain, he goes, -da 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 -da, over on the guitar. But that little -da 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 is backed by keyboards. Really cool little effect. And um, there's little synthesizers and keyboards just laced through the album, really. All through little songs. But just little bits here and there. Just, just a little... Just as a nice little finishing touch, but really nice little subtle, yeah, finishing touch is what I said. But um, it's a nice little effect to have as well. Pretenders as well is a nice, the album opens nicely with a nice little one-two punch. Um, but yeah, you've got good rockers on it. You've got a good use of groove. There's a bit of shredding here and there. Nice fast, thrashy numbers with a nice little um, emphasis on groove when needed. Nice little bouncy bits and then really good soaring high choruses. Um, and then you've got like songs like um, To Insanity. What was the word? Yeah. Crossroads to Insanity and um, Apology as well. Well, no. Crossroads to Insanity is um, kind of like a sort of dark, moody number, kind of ballady in a way. Um, Vexed starts out kind of acoustically, but then gets nice and heavy as the song goes on with a really cool chorus. Um, yeah, when, when that does kick in, actually, it's quite heavy once it kicks in. So maybe not a good example, actually, Vexed. Although it starts out kind of um, nice and quiet and then just sort of builds up. But Crossroads to Insanity is a really good... Um, yeah, that's the one that's kind of like a dark brooding number. Um, cynical, um, uh, critical cynic, sorry, is a nice little technical freshy number. And um, Fractured is a fucking awesome chorus and a really good groove under the back of that as well. Let's find a chorus to that, actually. Did I show you this booklet? I can't remember if I should held this up or not. Here we go. Put some photos of the... I'll talk about who's on the album in a second, actually. I've skipped over that. I'm getting all ahead of myself. Um, what was I saying? Fractured? No. What did I say? Fractured, yeah. Something to do. I can't remember where the bloody chorus went now. But it is really good. <laughs> it's, I'll tell you what, it's 13 songs that I've just... I've had it on the loop. And I'm getting to the point where I'm getting stuff stuck in my head. But, um, yeah... Rejoicing the suffering. Don't. Yeah, that's the one I've been stuck in the head. That's rejoicing the suffering. Not fractured at all. I don't know why I. Uh, that's got to be in here somewhere. How does fractured go? No, I would sing you a little bit, but um, it's escaped me that one. But. I know it has got a good little groove in the chorus and um, good bouncy chorus. Ah, oh, that was one thing that... Um, what's really interesting is the final track, which is One by One. And that, we are in sort of melodic death metal territory on that one. It opens with this real... It goes sort of just goes... Into the thing and then... And you're like... 
But we've got like full on death metal. Don't get too excited. You're not like, you know, we're not in entombed <laughs> territory. I don't know. Let's think uh, maybe soil work or maybe Dimmu Borgia. Think of a melodic death metal band that can afford really good production that are probably signs to Nuclear Blast. Someone like that. But that opening riff and that drums underneath, we're in death metal territory. Don't worry about that. And um, that's one good thing as well. Todd really shows off what he can do vocally here. He's doing high pitched screens, as in Rob Halford. Hence, that's probably what made me bring up Bankhead earlier. He does your death metal growl now and then. Yeah, he does it. He does it. Um, he's he's doing. He's got he's got such a good range, and he can do so much with his voice, and it really shows off what he can do on this. And you know, he's a fucking talented singer anyway. I mean, yeah, he's singing Queen's for God's sake, so he's hardly a slouch. But, you know, he's doing a lot more with his voice and showing off what he can do with his voice. And he's really sort of, the shekels are off on this. The, um, the songs can do whatever he wants them to do, really. So, um, yeah, this is a solo album, but it's uh, him and another guy. So you've got Todd Latari and uh, Craig Blackwell. Now, Craig Blackwell is doing guitars and bass, and Todd not only is doing the vocals... He's also doing guitars and the drums. You talented bastard. Who do you think you are? So, um, making us all look bad here. So, yeah, this is an absolute heavy metal gem. And uh, well worth your time. Regardless of your taste. Regardless of where you sit in the whole metal paradigm. Whatever your preference is. If you like a bit of fresh, you like a bit of melodic, traditional metal, a bit of power metal. And maybe even a little bit of... Death metal, if you like it, on the melodic side and the clean production side, you cannot go wrong with this, no matter what your preferences is. And like I say, you've got 10 tracks here, and I only just realised, three bonus tracks, but you've got an hour of fucking top-notch, just classically made, classic recipe, good, I don't know what else to say. Heavy metal, that's all you need to know. Good, melodic, great songs, great musicianship, great production. Who produced it? Someone uh, quite, I think Zeus. Let's have a look. Um, oh, Craig Blackwell, the other guy that did the... Um, oh, so Craig and Todd have produced it amongst themselves and Zeus has mixed it. So there you go. But uh, yeah, don't sleep on this like I did. Don't be a div. Go get this. Well worth your time. So uh, thank you for the... Uh, viewers that uh, recommended this to me and um, yeah I'm really glad I picked this up so yeah I'm loving the Queen's White album loving this and um, loving you lot for watching so if you've made it this far do us a favour give us one of them share this around to your mates that's all I ask and uh, if you're new to the channel welcome aboard um, go back and watch uh, there's well over 100 videos at this point so um Go and look through the catalogue and see anything you might like the look of. And, uh, yeah, I'll see you all soon. And uh, I've got a lot of good stuff coming up, actually. So, working on it now. Working on the Razor video. That's coming soon. Got a couple of unboxing ones for you. And, uh, yeah, loads of good stuff coming up. And um, let me know in the comments as well, especially regular viewers. For my top ten... At the end of the year, I'm thinking I might do something different this year, and I'm going to do it as a live stream, so therefore you lot can interact because I'm getting a lot more comments than I used to. So um, you lot seem to be quite happy chipping in now. So uh, yeah, I might do a live stream. I ain't got a bloody clue how to do it, but it can't be that hard. Everyone else seems to do it, so I'll get a mate to give me a bit of advice, and I'll um, yeah, maybe doing a live stream at the end of the year. I'll do my top 10 albums and you lot can leave comments and we can have a drink and a chit chat. Sort of somewhere in the middle, after Christmas, before New Year, preferably, I'm thinking. So, uh, yeah, let us know in the comments what you think of that. Let me know what you think of this. Go and have a listen. Go get it. And I'll see you all soon. Take care.